Hi everyone, welcome to the PlayStation Access Podcast, where we have got a jam-packed episode of RPG goodness coming up. Join the whole Access gang for what makes role-playing games great, demonic voices conjured by the spirit of Gollum, and more anteater facts than you can shake a bottle of Actimel at. Redistribute your stats to max out your listening skill, as we're about to begin. Hello everybody and welcome to the PlayStation Access Podcast, the official podcast of PlayStation UK, where this week we are talking all about RPGs. Yes, yes, oh. yes. My time has come. Yeah, you're like <laughs> bristling with excitement over here. I'm very excited for you. This is like the same level as, as Dave with the Star Wars, mm-hmm. but just, just RPGs. Yeah. Just RPGs. They're, just... they're my they're my games. Yeah. Rob Pearson games. Oh, I was oh, to say. oh my god, that was smooth. I was literally about to say. <laughs> Rob PGs and you've already yeah. beaten it. When did you think this? When did you figure that out? Years Lit- ago? No, just just now. <laughs> oh my God, I don't believe that. That was too fast for just now. <laughs> it was. That's how quick my wit is. Oh, was sharpened like Blimey. the steel yes. of a sword in an RPG. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And moving on to the names that I thought up of. Um, which are nowhere near Rob Pearson games as puns. So you guys need to be nice to me this week and not badmouth me when I'm away. To our guests. We don't like, bad oh, mouth you. You're here. You said these are rubbish <laughs> oh, you're still here, so it'll be nice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I did. I thought we liked it. I, I thought, thought it, was, it was nice just actually reading them out. Yeah. I thought Ash will love this. I did like I did like seeing the I uh, seeing the reaction when I wasn't there. I was like, ooh, 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 ooh. and then and then I think you went Robbie and everyone went, oh. <laughs> That's tradition, isn't it? Yeah. Mine is always rubbish. Yeah. And it's well, just we'll because it's Yeah, will it be thing. today? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get out. there. We'll get it's not Rob Pearson games, which is too good. So mine is Arthur Nash. That's good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. 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 The dragon but- the dragon from Skyrim. Oh! Oh, the big yeah. one. Mm, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Fire breathing. He's kind of like the same oh, yeah. size as all of the dragons. But yeah, he's just yeah, the, he's like, the you nice know, one who yeah, lives on top of the mountain. Like, really close, so he seems bigger because you know he's he, he he's, does speak right into your yeah, into the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the the whole the quote is um is it better to is it better to be born good or to overcome your <laughs> evil nature? <laughs> I don't remember his voice sounding like that. Oh, no, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. That one. Oh, now it's him. Dragon. That's, it. That's how they all sound, isn't it? Like smoke. That's how yeah. he speaks. That's Benedict Cumberbatch flying over the, original dragon. the town. Rah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've also got Dave. You are Dave DeLion. Yes. Dan DeLion. The bard. Yeah. I would take it. Musician. Big yeah, fan. Yeah, exactly. Teller of Tales. Oh, you've got his energy there. Teller of Tales. Yeah, I like the, the hand it. that flowed with that. The Tale of Tales. That's all I've got, apparently. Because you become your character in RPG, don't you? Yeah, very true. Um, Rosie. Okay. Yours I struggled a little bit with. So it's Ivor Rosie. Like Ivor, <laughs> like Ivor from I- Assassin's Creed. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. no All right, yeah. no just idea. stuck Rosie's name at the end of another yeah. character's <laughs> name. That does happen sometimes. Yeah. Just like, yeah, I've got to be honest. Oh, Rosie. wait, no, I, I, I spelt it like Ivorzy. <laughs> Oh. Ivorzy. Oh, that's so oh, much better. I've, that is actually Ivorzy. <laughs> Ivorzy. 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 I apologise. I haven't played Assassin's Creed since the PS3 days. Well, in Valhalla, Ivorzy. <laughs> <laughs> Taking over. <laughs> Taking over. <laughs> On my boat, here I come. <laughs> yeah. uh, and Rob, let's see. Let's see what we've got. Come on. It's... Don't be rubbish. It's... Oh, God. It's A-Rob. Like Aerith. A-Rob. Hey Rob, why, d- <laughs> <laughs> why right. can you why can you uh, have Air Rosie? Oh, that's much oh, better. Oh, that's loads <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh what? And you can be Ivor Rob. I mean, that is at least as good as Ivor Rosie. <laughs> so, <laughs> it'd be yeah. Ivor, wouldn't it? Oh yeah. Let's move Ivor. on. I, I think, just thought yeah. you'd like being included in the Final <sighs> Fantasy bit. I do. A A Robs. A Rob. A Robs. I'm trying to think of this. (laughs) (laughs) A Rob. (laughs) Okay, right. Let's move on. (laughs) Let's move on from that car crash. (sighs) So, 
Today, we're going to be talking about RPGs and not just the naming conventions of main characters, but many other facets of enjoying them, what we like about them, some of our favourites, and what makes an RPG as well, because I feel like the name is so broad now and encompasses Mm -hmm. so many games. So we're just going to dig into that for a bit of fun and joy. We're then going to move on to comments of the week, which are community highlights from the hashtag pod squad. 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 Yeah, well done, everyone. I missed it. I missed it for a week. I was very sad. Oh, we're then going to go to Before We Go, which is some coverage outside of gaming to prove that we are real life flesh people. But first, it is the question that comes every week. Say it with me, kids. What's What's new? new? Okay, everybody, we're in the What's New section. Wow, what a brave new frontier we've entered. Literally new, because there's loads of new things coming up that haven't released yet that I'm going to talk about so we can say how excited we are for them. The first one being Street Fighter VI on the 2nd of June. So yeah! Not long to wait. Rosie, you have been our kind of head person of this. So what, what are you feeling about Street Fighter? I'm, I mean, I'm excited. Uh, I don't know why I'm the head head person here. You're the one you who won. the hands on. You, you won the competition we did back at EGX. So, <laughs> so really thanks for reminding everyone <laughs> but no I'm super excited for it um, after playing it a bit um, like I've said in the previous podcast episode that I'm really excited to to learn the characters with the modern controls and to you know just it's just a really fun game it's really accessible I really like the open world elements to it as well as the fighting and the craziness in it so I think it's just going to be a really good time and you can't you can't not be hyped for a good time 100% <laughs> a good time <laughs> she makes a good argument yeah, I'm gonna have please. a great time with it. And I'm very excited for it. <laughs> yeah, it looks really good. We've we've been playing the demos uh, at lunchtime. The demo at lunchtime. Mm. Um, watching Alex play it has actually been the greatest joy recently because he's he's just he's a big Tekken head. Yeah. So watching him get used to Street Fighter and get a little bit a little bit owned, a little bit, Ooh. a little a tiny bit. Oh, he, so he got some punches landed on him because on Tekken. Uh, what which one is the one that's out now? Tekken seven. Tekken seven. seven. In Tekken seven, he's been. Um, that shows how much how much prowess I have in Tekken. Street <laughs> Fighter, great. Tekken, no. Um, but Tekken seven, he's been going through the. I'm going to have to mention this because otherwise he's going to be in the comments like telling everyone he's raised up to brawler rank. That's what's you new, don't everybody. Have to tell everyone. We've got to throw him a bone on. sometimes. He We've got to give him a bone. Bones. He's like basically <laughs> a skeleton at this point. <laughs> he's fine. Uh, well, yeah, he's reached brawler brawler status which we were all really impressed with until we realised that it's nowhere near the top it's like the halfway man yeah. I, like- I saw him get absolutely owned by someone two ranks below him the other day oh. And, oh. you know I know he's going to hear this <laughs> <laughs> sorry Alex but we can all agree that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I saw him get punched fought, on Street Fighter I, as well. I haven't fought Alex in Tekken since I beat him 3-2 last oh, Christmas. Oh, so. there we go. Oh, that's match. why, yeah, grudge match. Oh, yeah. I love it when he can't fight back as well. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when we can just sit here and be what like... What's the thing? Ah. Alex is much better at Tekken now, probably, so I'm just not going to fight him again. Much better now, probably, maybe. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> is, yeah. it, is this like, what, Nathan's child and you beating them at FIFA and then letting it it's sit exactly for years like that, and yes. years? <laughs> exactly like that, yeah. <laughs> That story's on the channel somewhere. He's 21 if, now. Yeah, and yeah. he still hasn't beaten you at FIFA. Yeah, and I beat him 4 0 when he was 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> well, this is the sort of stories we can get from Street Fighter 6 as well. Yeah. There's been many horrible creations I've seen on the, the screen downstairs, some of them that I cannot name on camera, Rosie. Me? Yeah. I didn't. You're, I, crea- you're like, I didn't, I didn't. I didn't name him. I saw a rude name. I, I didn't name him. You, Rosie. That was, Rosie. No, that was someone else in the office. I didn't even know what the word was. <laughs> <laughs> like, genuinely, they said, I'll name it this. And I just thought it was like, oh, that's a fun word. And then uh, that's, yeah. It's not a fun oh, word. It's a rude Rosie. word. But that's when I learned about what that word was. I genuinely didn't know. <laughs> what, what word was it? You have to tell uh, yeah, me. Yeah, well, after. we can't say I hear, but uh, well, I'll tell you afterwards. Have some guesses in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't a swear. Let's I love just... I love how innocent and pure you are, Rosie. With lot of, I've been I've been present for you discovering a lot of a lot of these terms. <laughs> I, and I phrases, would say, Ron, and I've enjoyed that Rosie it. is not as pure as she pretends to be. There's still I've a lot of things I don't know. I've definitely seen the mask slip sometimes. <laughs> 
Oops, I didn't know. <laughs> yes, you did. You knew exactly what you were but then, saying. But genuinely, so many times I genuinely still do not know what things mean. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like... I feel like <laughs> not I'm even rude, just things. What is a podcast? <laughs> what, what we, it's weird that we do this every week. <laughs> Never thought to ask. No, I feel like I have been like the cursed bearer of knowledge for so many things. You have taught me a lot of things. You're responsible for a lot of things. But yeah. also, Rosie's taught me... We've learned from each other. We've mm. been... We've We've been rude together. I'm trying yes. to think of what I possibly would have taught you. I just said it to make you feel better. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Rosie. Like, I Sorry. haven't taught you anything. <laughs> Unless it's like 19th century gentleman speak. I don't think you've taught Ash too much. <laughs> Rosie taught me how to play Cuphead, like separately okay. to speak. Right, that's good. We're, that's we're good. like, Rosie's been absolutely, we've been playing Cuphead at lunchtime. That's another what's yeah. new. Right. And Rosie has been, at, like, it basically is, I go and I go, oh, dang. And I die halfway through and then Rosie finishes the level for me, right. which is like, I love it. It's so yeah. good. I do say, do you want me to I, I, did, I did say I was like do you want me to retry and then you're yeah, like, nah. I'm like no 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 it's okay I like seeing it like I'll have a couple of goes and be like I'm frustrated and then Rosie be like don't worry I got you <laughs> and she gets there to the end with like full health and all of the buffs it's very impressive it's really good it's really good um also coming out which I know you guys are super super stoked for is Amnesia the Bunker as well I'd forgotten ah! about that one it was supposed to be coming out on the 23rd of May he originally got he got it Oh, uh, what? Sorry, <laughs> we didn't get it. No, I nobody didn't. reacted to my no. amazing joke. What? So I meant- derailed the whole podcast. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, Dave said, um, I keep forgetting your name. I've called you everything other than Dave today, honestly. Now you've gone upstairs. I just don't know who you are. He's, we've moved desks. That's another what's new. <laughs> um, Dave said about amnesia. Forgot about that one. Oh, no, it's, it's too clever. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem with that one, Dave. And your delivery RPG. was too dry. <laughs> I think okay work on the delivery okay I'll take that under I think advice. it was very good you got to announce it almost yeah. I did try but then I had to point oh. and go everyone stop Forgot talking about that one <laughs> <laughs> you got to do oh okay yeah, I see I see yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh your tongue More, twitched uh... as you went right, eh? Like, I'm sorry, from the side. I've got like that one. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is what Keep happens. that thing under control. <laughs> this is what happens when we're all on the podcast together. This is why we've had to separate them up so many times. Um, but yes, very funny. I'm going to continue you. with the podcast right, now. Yes, so, uh, Amnesia the Bunker is coming out on, on the 6th of June. It was originally coming out on the 23rd of May. So it's kind of branched this lovely period of our podcast releasing. And it's coming out... Um, quite soon afterwards I'm really excited I love Amnesia I've played all the games Um, I made it my mission to play through uh, Rebirth in my week off so I've been playing Rebirth Um, we also did Machine for Pigs like uh, this is me making Sam play everything with me Um, I did Dark Descent ages ago and Justine and then my week off was Machine for Pigs and Rebirth and then The Bunker's coming now there's so many Amnesia games are you saying Machine for Pigs yeah Yeah. a machine for pigs that Very was uh, the Chinese room who made that, I think. Yeah. And oh. Jessica Curry did the soundtrack for it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Jessica really? Curry. Yeah. There's loads of pigs in it. Up there with Nobu Uematsu for me. It's one of the all-time video game composing greats. Oh, you've not Gas from Nisia. Gas from is what I'm there hearing. You go. I like pigs, but I, I wouldn't. You I'm wouldn't not like these ones. a machine for no. them. Well, unless it helps <laughs> they the They don't pigs. need machines. It's kind of allegorical. Do you, if you do, you guys might. Do you want to hear about Machine for Pigs, or shall we move on? Not now. Okay. It's going to be sad. I just want to, pigs to be happy. What? Well, uh, uh, um, well, they're not definitely the not in here. Yeah, not the game for you, Rosie. I don't no. Think. Well, okay, but Amnesia: The Bunker is coming out. But more importantly, something that has. Don't say it. Just do released. Don't say it. Let's skip over oh, it. Oh, I've employed my little freak today. <laughs> <laughs> Precious Dawn has, has arrived. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Gollum got a bit What's stumbly there. Uh, they've come. Anyway, yeah, Lord yeah. of the Rings got <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the glo- the glo- the glo- the glo- the Glings Gollum has come out. <laughs> the Lord of the Rings Gollum has just released on the 25th of May. Rob has been inseparable from his precious. Gollum. Who is your favourite character then? Um, I don't know. I don't actually thought of that before. Well, you're on the spot now. Uh, okay. Uh, Three, probably Gandalf. Two. Probably. Okay. Gandalf. Who did you get in the Lord of the Rings quiz thing? Boromir. 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 <laughs> 
big Boromir. He's a hero. Yeah. Yeah, after being a villain. Certainly, yeah, certainly. He's not a villain. He is for a moment. No, he's not. He's a man he's corrupted just, by yeah, power. He's, he's corrupted and he, he all he wants is to protect his home. No, he wants to grab Frodo's ring. <laughs> 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 Your lips. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, he man. wants he wants to protect his homeland and he's so desperate to do that that he's he's corruptible. But he's he's also a hero. Anyone who thinks Boromir is anything other than a hero is just he's is not incorrect. Pure. There are other heroes. No, in, he's a human in, in the fellowship, like, and he's the th- last thing he does is a human fight. <laughs> he, he fights off he a does. load of Uruk High with arrows sticking out of his chest. Yeah. It's amazing that scene. But he's not your favorite. You would just are you just are him according to a quiz on the internet. <laughs> Like, nothing of this has anything to do with Lord of the Rings Gollum, which is out now. <laughs> well, you could, it is slightly linked, but yes. R- Rob going through content, making videos like arrow in, arrow yeah. in all week. <laughs> like I must finish the Friday feature. That's that's the the true the true thing. I I got Frodo, which I was very I've I've had mixed feelings about the whole way through because he's a, he is a moaner. He is a moaner mm. and he does whine. Yeah. And I don't think that's me, really. I can't <laughs> do this, Sam. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> no. <laughs> to be fair, you literally sat here before the podcast and was like, Rob, can don't you get out me? Can you get my headphones? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't moaning. That was asking, which Frodo wouldn't do because he takes the ring himself and does it all like majestically. If anything, I'm like, <laughs> I just, I'm one of the hobbits luxuriating in the Shire. I don't want to be a hobbit. I want to be a, a lovely elf like in Rivendell comb in my hair but I would be um, a, a human or or a hobbit or even an orc maybe a goblin <laughs> in the Moria I, yeah okay did Rob hand over the headphones and say it is a gift I didn't get the headphones oh I got the headphones very Boromir of you <laughs> <laughs> Rosie got them and Rosie came up as Sam yeah so like it was <laughs> Sam so it makes sense yeah. you're both Sam it's a Sam sofa over there yeah. Sam Sam's. Sam-la Sam's. Sam's. we're just Sam's. yeah chilling yeah, Sam's yeah I hate it but also can't argue with it yeah sidekicks <laughs> Yeah. To me and Rob, Rob, that's your sidekick. That's my sidekick. Yeah. <laughs> He's Boromir. Yeah, you, again, you're my a side- sidekick. Okay, you're both my sidekick then, if you like. <laughs> no, you can have Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't very Sam of you. I'll be like Sam's Gollum if he went evil. <laughs> Sam's Gollum. Sam's Gollum. Yeah, I'll be like the evil yeah. Rosie. Yeah. You're like when when we decide not to follow Ash or help Ash in any way. That's when you come in. Yeah, that's when I come you, in. You def- you're you're our defender. I'm just the oh, okay. I'll get it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that for you. You're like no. Oh. Sam's have had enough. Oh my god. The, 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 the Sam union is starting. <laughs> right. Um. Don't tell my boyfriend Sam that the, the, <laughs> the Sam union is beginning. Uh. Right, guys. On from lovely Lord of the Rings Gollum announcement and release. A special little idea has been concocted by Gollum himself. And I thought it'd be a great idea to do. So we've teamed up. I'm the Smeagol, he's the Gollum. And (laughs) we've got a PlayStation Access mini quiz for you! Oh Oh my god, you've won this game, you've won this game. (laughs) If it's Lord of the Rings themed, you've won this. Watch me crash and burn, right? Let's crash and burn together as Sam's. Right, the Union of Sam's is going up against the PlayStation Access Mini Quiz, which is actually a famous video game quote quiz. So oh. both of you have an equal chance of doing it. Okay. And okay. you're thinking, what? What does this have to do with Lord of the Rings? What does this have to do with Gollum? Yes. Well, it's not me that's going to be reading the questions. <laughs> is Andy Circus here? Is he? <laughs> <laughs> you're contractually obliged to say no. <laughs> <laughs> no process. <laughs> Small. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's five questions. It's a, a fastest finger first scenario. Again, let him do his quote though, because let him get to the end well, of the they, quote. They, but they, no, I can't so, do that. So we have to wait for the quote to be finished. We can't do that. We're gonna have to jump in, and then he can do it. If like, yeah, you then know. he can finish okay, it. All right. So, so uh, I just, I just know he'll, he'll want to do the whole. You gotta look. You gotta play fair. You gotta let him do the whole quote at some point. Yes, so at some point. fastest finger first. So is you, it just our names were screaming? Dave and Roz. Yeah, just say screaming. the answer. Say the answer. I reckon. <laughs> you what? Shout the answer. We'll figure it out. Don't worry. Oh, and you, you, you. So it's going to be a point for getting the correct game, mm-hmm. okay. and also a, another point if you guess the correct character okay. who says the famous line. Okay. 
Okay, I haven't run any of these by Gollum either, so right, he's probably, okay. he might go, whoa, <laughs> yeah. I don't know where that's Let from. Let me just clear my throat. Okay. <laughs> here you go, here is the tablet of truth. The precious. <laughs> I mean, this one is so easy. Yeah, well, it's got to start <laughs> don't easy. Don't hate when people say hate when people say that. <sighs> I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my Rosie. favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Mass Effect 2 yeah. um, Commander Shepard yeah. If you, if you watch back I want you to see me lose the ability To know what I was supposed to do I was like, <laughs> I literally went like this <laughs> and then Rosie like, said Rosie and I was like oh yeah I'm supposed to say Dave <laughs> <laughs> Rosie, I was like do we just say the answer on my name so <laughs> I we're saw going you twitch and thought what the hell Rosie are you doing <laughs> okay that's one point to Rosie <sighs> oh, the breath every time Stop right there, criminal scum. Nobody breaks the law on Skyrim. No. Rosie. No. Oblivion. That's why I hesitated because I thought it was Oblivion, but I didn't want to get confident. You yeah. are correct, Rosie. Yes. It is Oblivion. What's the character's name? Uh, I, I, I just know it from the memes on YouTube. Oh, okay. <laughs> poor, poor Rosie. Poor. It's a god, so that would have been easy enough. Cyrodiil god. So what, so at least I could have just said God. No, I would have said Cyrodiil God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, no, I would not have got that. Okay. Right. Next one. <sighs> it's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of gum. Uh, Rosie. Is it Duke Nukem? It is, Rosie! Yes! And that counts for both answers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, so, yes. Rosie uh, got the first question, so that's two points. You got the second question, one point, and then you got two more, so that's five points to Rosie. Yeah. Out of five. No, it's not worse. Well, five questions, so it's ten points, so five out of ten. Next one. You wouldn't know it by looking... But Jormungandr is a sparkling conversationalist. Yeah. God of War 2018. Yes. Yeah. Come on. Audio, remember? No pausing. The head. Oh, come, come on. Come on, David. He's called the head. No. Loads by... Uh, but Kratos goes, quiet head. He has a name. Yeah. Yeah, what's his name? Oh, you want his name? Yeah. You were very specific about that. Didn't want the name of the specific guard in Oblivion. I wanted Cyrodiil guard. I think a headless head is perfectly acceptable. But no, the head has a head. push on for a name, yeah. then I'm sure I can provide you with I would that. like one. So, everybody listen. I will wait for quiet before I give my answer. But we're on an audio podcast. We're not having loads of audio you can breaks. Edit. You can edit. That's what editing is. I can't remember his name is. Oh, Rosie? Mamir. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Mamir. <laughs> so 6-1. It's just his head. Yeah, 6-1. Not the rest of him. 6-1. Right. Final. 6-1? <laughs> Where's she got an extra point from? From getting Mamir? Oh, yeah. Good point. Final <laughs> question. Final quote. <sighs> Great. Power is out. And a girl is trapped. I swear to God, if there is a zombie around the next corner. Oh. Oh, come on. Dave, oh, Rosie's vibrating. Dave. Oh, yeah, yeah. Resident Evil 4. Wrong. Damn. Which one is it? Rosie, we're going to need an answer. Um, Ooh, come on. I is can't. it Resident Evil? No. No. Okay, Dave, would you like another go? You can have one more go each. No. No? Resident Evil 2. Uh, what? No, it's not Resident Evil. No Resident Evil. Wait, is it? I know the line. Um. It's Okay, I'm taking that as a fail from both of yeah. parts. It's Uncharted 2, Nathan Drake. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah. Little joke. Little joke. Little joke from the old Drakester, as they call it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rob, do you want to read any more quotes no, or do them fully? I think we should move on. Did that satisfy your needs? <laughs> it did, thank you. <laughs> Unless it's anyone's birthday. No. Not no. today. It is October, though, if you want to do it in advance. No. It not as in it is in October. Well, I missed a word. Get a song in October then. Oh. <sighs> I say. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, everybody. That is the end of what's new. So we're now going to move on to our main feature. Okay, everybody, we're in the land where we talk about RPGs. So, Woo! Rob, as the the biggest RPG fan, Stan gaming man what 
would you say makes up a perfect RPG? Oh. Or what are the main ingredients for well, RPG? For me, it has to be, it's the escapism for me and it's getting lost in an enormous world and it's living the fantasy of being someone else in that world for me. That's what I like in an RPG and it's why I constantly go back to Skyrim time and, and time again because you can just you can put yourself in that character and all of the stories that you happen upon and create so many of them are you know putting yourself in that world and I just I love I love the fantasy of being of pretending like I'm the dragonborn I am also the leader of the dark brotherhood I'm also the arch mage of the mages guild and the head of the thieves guild and, and all a of villager. these things and yes <laughs> and I I just I I love it uh and yeah escaping into these into these worlds and pretending to be role playing as someone else for me that's what makes a great RPG Role playing in the role playing games. Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. That's fair. That's fair. How about you guys? Oh, I think for me, I just really because the thing is, the thing I love about RPGs is that if you play it like the first run through, you do. I always like am completely honest with how I would answer. So again, I think for me, it's like putting yourself in the character. So if I played cyberpunk, it will probably be the sweetest cyberpunk character because they wouldn't want to do any violence or anything like that. I'm like, oh no, I'm really sorry. Um, but then like, you know, if you do the next playthrough and then you go a different route, then that's when you can be like, right, okay. And like you explore the whole game from another perspective. Um, and there's like, the whole game feels different because of it. I think those are like RPGs when I'm just like, oh yeah, because it gives you like, you know, an entire entire new story. So you've had your run, the sacred run, for me anyway, like I call it the sacred run. And then it's like, okay, now let's see what, what else could have happened in this world. And it's just more like epic story and gameplay, isn't it? So mm -hmm, for sure. Dave, are you a big rpg -er? Because I, I know you like a puzzle game and kind of like, I know you like quite quiet, understated stuff sometimes as well. Are you into the big, the big bustling worlds of RPG? Um, the big problem I have with RPGs is that I'm, I'm not good at role playing. And I, for a long time, really, I think I've missed out on RPGs. I've played, played them, had loads of fun with them. But I'm not good at, I'm not good at that bit. And I, it, it was actually with Cyberpunk uh, that I made a real effort to role play. I was like, I'm just, I just play myself every time, like very middle of the road, like safe answers, mm. nothing evil, just try and be the good guy, you know? And, and um, whilst I think that is great and I knew, you know, that is a legitimate way to role play as well. Um, I wasn't role playing. I was just being nice. Mm. And so I have had a lot of fun with these games, but with cyberpunk, that was the first time that I, decided to try and be someone in this world and kind of inhabit you know i set out very at the start you choose kind of like the archetype of the character and a little bit about their background so i really spent some time just like trying to be a corpo evil woman who just wanted to get ahead at, at ahead of everybody else and it made a massive difference to my enjoyment of that game i think well i didn't try and play it another way but it was the first time where i really felt i had was playing rpgs the right way and um and yeah i it made a big difference to me um and so i think like when i think of rpgs i really enjoy them i traditionally have just enjoyed the kind of mechanics of them more than inhabiting the character but now i think this has opened my eyes to that experience has kind of opened my eyes to train trying to play them a different way mm -hmm. so um yeah it would be interesting to go back to like a skyrim and try and be a character rather than just dave in skyrim oh but that i think that's kind of half the fun is just being yourself in a new world it's like it's not so much that you have to role play a character but you role play a world you know what i mean like yeah, I know that, what you mean. that part of it like um like i love going in as, as, as in the more linear rpgs where you're shepherd and stuff and like mass effect as well and and you, you just decide what you want to do um based on on how you feel about situations i just think it's really interesting to kind of see what choices you make um as a person and how they affect everyone else mm. around you because it's a safe space to like say what you actually think isn't it i think i still get <laughs> i think yes. i still get very stuck in trying to win the game and that's not how they're built but yeah. my idea of winning is like the good outcome which which i think is a flaw because you should just have an outcome I, an outcome mm. that's a, it's a story and like i love in other mediums like i love stories that you know are ambiguous or 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 bad have bad endings or whatever it doesn't matter it's a story but in games i've i always find myself trying to have the good ending and like mm. take some pride in it 
weirdly but i also think it gets in the way sometimes of just having fun or exploring rpgs especially like to their maximum yeah. potential mm. yeah i feel that i feel that but i yeah I, that's part of part of the joy of them for me is definitely just being me and going ha, 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 what chaos can i unleash on this world instead of my normal one <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, do you think rpgs have to be fantasy to work because a large portion of rosie's already like no oh, no yeah no sorry that's what i was like no <laughs> <laughs> i didn't mean to be <laughs> <laughs> i think a large portion of rpgs thrive in fantasy settings like straight away you're in the sky very zone. traditional setting isn't it yeah uh, if you especially if you trace rpgs uh roots back to like tabletop role-playing games mm-hmm. like dungeons and dragons who were obviously influenced by earlier fantasy literature like the whole genre has been born from mm. and has roots in fantasy but absolutely no like you can you can use that template as we have seen with many many brilliant rpgs that are not set mm-hmm. in fantasy i think the idea um, is that f- uh, fantasy is a setting that helps people suspend their disbelief because it's so different to our world. So I, I feel like that's why often RPGs kind of lean into, can lean into fantasy quite heavily, but I think that it's not important. And actually, like I said, it doesn't work on me. I just end up playing myself in this fantasy world. I, but So I, I think like... <laughs> You're like, ooh, what's fetching armor? <laughs> it would be extremely interesting to just play a, like a much more kind of contemporary rpg like just about this this world like i would be interested to that's just, just be, life dave i know, yeah, I know i'm not very good at that either but i'd be interested to play a, a character just living a life like you know it would need a bit more than that but you know like a uh, it would like sims. be interesting yeah. Like the Sims. Like the Sims. That famous RPG. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what's the game that's literally just about living your life the yeah. most? I was like, probably Sims. Mm, yeah. Through that. I think fantasy is a a good stepping off point for that and sci-fi as well because mm. they're so far from the normal existence. Yeah. Um, but is it, is it just a case of going super extreme? Is it a case of taking you so far out of your everyday existence that you can be someone else or do you long for something that is actually closer to home? Like, I know you've just made a little joke about it, but like, would that actually be appealing where you can play out? Ooh, do I make the business decision? Do I sharpen my pencil? Or like that sort of thing. <laughs> That's what I imagine you do all day upstairs in I've the office. I've got a lot of pencils, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you pair there going... <laughs> Speaking personally, I'd definitely be interested, but I think, I'm, I think more from just like, a, what would that be like? I've not seen a, an RP... I've not played an RPG that is closer to home um and so i'd be really intrigued by that just to see what that felt like and mm. and how that played out i don't know that it would be make for a good rpg i suppose is what i'm trying to say and like definitely i think different settings really help that because you yeah you just suspend your disbelief and you try to inhabit this new world whereas if it was like it's just like you're just a different person living in bath <laughs> i don't know whether i'd do very well at that i don't know what about you rosie I think it would be definitely interesting to do um, because I think, you know, there are some RPGs which, I mean, one that popped into my head, I know that it's like in the sci-fi universe, but kind of Mass Effect for me because, Mm. yes, you're in space and it's all about the sci-fi and stuff, but still, like, you're Commander Shepard, you meet people, make relationships and stuff like that. It's still quite human and... Mm. well, Dave doesn't. (laughs) <laughs> oh. oh, every I time. I have a lot of relationships. They just were very <laughs> friends, platonic. But like, you know, and like, you know, you can go, you go in your, your I can't remember what it's called, but like the ship hub area. The and Normandy. you can just yeah, but like you know the the. You need hub- to play Mass Effect Three, you do because this 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 not knowing words is stressing me like out. Like in the Normandy, you but get you yourself back in that game. I know the Normandy, but you know the part where you've got the map in the middle, and then Commander Shepard stands on like a stand bit and then it's like it goes around like that part there are just some people you can just casually talk to and Mm -hmm. so like you know things like that um or even for example like persona 5 uh you can just go and play snooker with people and stuff like that so there are still elements Persona 5 is a great example i think of a role-playing game that is very there are fantastical elements of course Mm. but it's very grounded in reality yeah and it and the whole structure of that game is is built around a daily schedule of getting up going to school Mm. coming home doing some chores doing your work and when you talk about it like that it sounds boring but it's one of the most incredible rpgs i've ever played persona 5 like so imaginative Mm. so cool so i think absolutely there is scope for role-playing games to be every bit as creative as they could be in a fantasy setting, mm. but in a in a more everyday setting. I mm. mean, to be fair, you're still going in 
you're still going inside people's minds and transforming into demon alter egos that's, in that's like half the game mm, like the other half not... is the again the yeah. very realistic and I just... do I do love the mundane everyday tasks yeah. in Persona 5 I love making coffee I love just walking I around in the rain I love making coffee and with... learning about coffee yes <laughs> it's great I love that uh, I, I was going to mention like Grand Theft Auto as well as kind of a more grounded one obviously it's not super grounded literally because you're hijacking a plane but like there's all sorts in there that is is it's like a normal world yeah. you know that you're messing up but it's it's a normal world it's mm. a bit more grounded there is things to do that are just average joe stuff yeah uh, i guess yeah gta is it's an interesting one i suppose it, you know, it's not quite an rpg in as much as you're playing yeah of course named characters but but Yes, and, and and something I hadn't considered is like there's a whole shorthand to setting something in like a more realistic world. Like same with Persona Five, is you don't have to explain any of the rules to the, of the world to begin with. Obviously, like Persona Five does turn into quite an you know have some quite unusual fantastical mm. elements, but like you know you know with GTA, if we take that as an example, like you just know how things work. You know what cars are. You know what police are. You know what's within the law and outside of the law and all that kind of stuff. You don't have to read any anything you know like within the game or get told anything about the law of it so uh, setting something like that in the real world does, can kind of fast forward you past some stages of a uh, another rpg another an rpg set in a different kind of setting oh man thinking about like not having the opportunity to read the lusty argonian maid is just upsetting though you know what i mean like oh, yeah. i, I want to read all the books about the histories of tamriel like i want to dive in and have little strange poems and daedric princes giving me like background checks on stuff like ah oh, i thinking think the, the more i think about rpgs the more i just want to like ride on the back of a dragon with my armor on and have a great time like that pure high fantasy is so satisfying i think that comes with its own shorthand as well from how like yeah. informed the genre is at this point you know it's going to be a bit medieval influenced as in there's going to be maybe knights and swords and yeah. you know there's going to be dragons that also can be withens or also worms from the family tree of of you know dragon-esque creatures Absolutely. um you know there's other stuff like unicorns and sirens and mythological beasts that all tie into it that is that kind of shorthand but it's going to be something you can learn about as well I don't know. I like fantasy RPGs the best is definitely the answer. Well, it's escapism as well. Like everything mm. you just described yeah. is like escaping. That, that's this. I guess that's it, isn't it? That's part. Of, that's the other side of the coin is like, it's just nice to go somewhere else. It helps you role play. It helps you suspend your disbelief because you're escaping to somewhere else. And like learning about this whole new world is like, it's brilliant. It's like everything I dreamed about as a kid, you know, like when, the only real way to do that when I was an actual child was like with something like Dungeons and Dragons, which I had no understanding or idea about. And then, you know, games have come along and been like a massive way of escaping to other worlds. Yeah. And, yeah. And fantastic. And the RPG is probably the quintessential kind of way type of game that like lets you do that. Yeah, for sure. I used to just sit and read Dungeons and Dragons like monster manuals. Like I, yeah. I didn't ever play the game because I was like, this was when I was like under ten. But I used just to get all my dad's like eighties manuals out and draw the pictures from the pictures in the book and read on all of the like stats. And I would like imagine like the oh, I loved doing that. That was so fun. And then playing games like the Elder Scrolls, which is definitely like my favourite one of the lot. So that's the one I'm going to keep coming back to. Um, or stuff like Dragon's Dogma and that sort of thing. Like being able to dive into those as like a teenager and an, and an adult is is just so satisfying because it is that kind of world that I created when I was younger that I can then go into again. Mm. Um, as, as for another question though, you spoke a little bit about making your character, Dave. Mm. The GTA kind of lacks that to make it an RPG. Do you guys feel like it needs to have a character creation and what sort of characters are, are you going to go for? Is it always the, the good guy? No, I don't think you need a character creation. I mean, already games that we've mentioned, Mass Effect, you're at the end, you are Commander Shepard at the end of the day. Yes, you can change your name and stuff like that. But you create them though. Like you, you yeah, shape her face. You do shape her face. Okay, no. Okay, let's say um, then Witcher Joker 3. from jo yeah from Witcher Three, Geralt, Joker mm. from Persona Five. Um, All of the Final Fantasy protagonists as well. Yeah. Like sometimes for me, playing a role playing game is just about being someone else, and mm. I think it's to another. It's a totally viable sub strand of of role playing game mm. i think like Just have i one. i enjoy oh for me ultimately it's about pretending to be someone else whether that's pretending to be someone i have created or pretending to be cloud strife mm. in mm. final fantasy 7 that's what i want i want to feel like 
you know, I am the hero. My actions are shaping this world and shaping this story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do What do you think about things like the Souls games where it's very like, it's not very verbal and it's kind of mysterious. Like what kind of, what, how do you feel about that kind of RPG where you're very much digging out your own enjoyment of the game rather than it will being kind of laid out and it's like, oh, here's a fantasy world with all these things. Ah. It's like, here's a little nugget and here's a trail of breadcrumbs. Oh, I'd, I'd love to be able to speak with any kind of expertise on this. <laughs> <laughs> but I, as a man who's consistently failed to dig out any of the story myself in these games, I will I will defer to people who have who have actually done Rosie? that. <laughs> <laughs> well, in terms of like the character creation element of it, I think that's an interesting one because when you first start, you like you know you really have no idea. Like your first ever from software type game, you have no idea what to expect, what how you're going to plan on fighting. Are you going to be a magic type? Are you going to be a strong type? Like when I first played Bloodborne, I very much went in with like leveling up my vitality and strength and endur endurance, um, and then as I was then playing more and more, my typical character is always the knight. I always like my, my strong knight can carry a big sword and that's just how my character has become from playing these games. But when I first started with Bloodborne, I had no idea what kind of character I was going to role play as or create. It's just like become a part of me, I guess, that if I went on a quest like this, I'd want to be like the, the like a big sword knight kind yeah. of deal. Um the bigger the sword, the better. Yeah, the like, bigger the sword, the better and stuff like that. And then, like, again, when I then played Demon Souls, that's when I started learning that maybe sometimes a little bit of magic. So, again, then my character developed again. So, when at some point I'll go into Dark Souls 2, my character's just always evolving for From Software games. And it's probably going to be, like, again, very similar to Demon Souls, like a heavy hitter, big knight type with, again, a, a little bit of magic, just a little bit, if I just want to heal or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just a little sprinkle. A little magic. sprinkle, a little but sprinkle. in terms of my character, yeah, they just sort of run through the world, and then the, with, in terms of the lore and stuff of those games, my character's just like running through, and then the lore happens. I'm like, oh wow, that's really interesting. Yeah, but um, it's only I guess kind of at the end. There are like there are choices you can make in the game that affects the story a little bit, but really it's like the final choice is the one that matters, and mm. you know you make that choice depending on what you've learned. And what you've done in the like throughout the rest of the game, so it's, it's just a very interesting one to point out. I can't say I've ever understood anything that's happened in the Souls or like Bloodborne, mm. even Bloodborne. Like I, I, I loved reading about it afterwards. Oh yeah. my god, I love that so much, and I loved going through again and kind of picking up bits and going, oh, I should have read more on this. Um, but yeah, at the time I was like, shoot, kill, slash, <laughs> get, get everything. Well, that's the thing you're prioritizing surviving. Mm. So, um, and then you don't even realise that, yes, you are role-playing as this character who you've created, like, while surviving, so... Yeah. Oh, my God, speaking of surviving, like, Red Dead Redemption, having to eat your, your canned peaches consistently. Um, oh, man. The survival mechanics, I think, they're... It depends on the game. Like something in Red Dead Redemption, it works great. But other games, I'm like, please just let me run around and like live without thinking about food and water. <laughs> ah! um, but, uh, moving on from that, though, what do you guys think about JRPGs and how they sit in the RPG section? Because they literally share a name. One is just Japanese RPGs. So what? why have they got two distinct categories? And do you think they should I've be brought together? I've had many debates with people about this. In my opinion... A JRPG is obviously stands for Japanese role playing game and traditionally refers to role playing games that were made in Japan. But I think increasingly it refers more to a specific style of role playing game, traditionally made in Japan. And you're looking at the classic Final Fantasy games, your Dragon Quests and your Nino Kunis, where it's often an anime art style, turn based combat, uh, random battles, big world map, and a, a party of characters. And you'll have multiple characters in your party. And you go on a quest to defeat the the evil Dark Lord who wants to destroy the world. That, for me, is a quintessential JRPG. It sounds like Dragon Age to me. <laughs> Whereas, for instance, you were just talking about Dark Souls. Essentially, that is a role-playing game made in Japan. I would not personally class it as a JRPG. I've opened a can of worms here, though, because this is something that is often debated. Yeah. What is a JRPG? For me, it is a style of game mm -hmm. rather than has, has become a style of role-playing game rather than simply a role-playing game that has been made in Japan. I think it is possible for a non-Japanese development studio to make a JRPG and for it to still be called a JRPG. Mm, yeah. There's my controversial hot take. Oh, he's <laughs> rehearsed that one. That was, yeah. I mean, I, I, I 
have no I, I don't feel qualified to have an opinion but I agree with Rob and as and as uh, in as much as like well, we don't put any other letters in front of we don't care about where any other RPG comes from so it's, it must be like a stylistic thing at least to, traditionally um, and now yeah obviously there's all kind of games that come out of um, Japan but uh, we don't put J in front of you know other genre types as well so I think JRPG must must point to kind of like stylistic choices and, mm-hmm. and mechanical choices about how the story is told how what you can expect from that game it is quite interesting. I've been playing um, Buddy Simulator 1984 uh, recently, which is so good. It's another one of my new favourites because it's it's like Doki Doki Literature Club meets Undertale. It's very Undertale inspired. It's pixel art. Um, and you get to a point where you can make a party and go through and engage in turn-based combat fights. And that is like, it's like, is this an RPG? Mm-hmm. Is this a JRPG? Like, uh, maybe? I don't know. Because it's got, like, the mechanics of it, but it does so many other things as well. So it's interesting trying to find those kind of delineations between yeah, it's, genres. Yeah, it's a weird one. You could even argue that, well, a, a game like South Park, The Stick of Truth, heavily, heavily inspired mm. by traditional mm. JRPGs. Would you call it a JRPG itself? I don't know. It's not mm. been made in Japan. Yeah. I don't know. The jury's out. Oh, well, in the comments, you'll have to let us know what you (laughs) guys think. You can do the arguing. Um, We are going to move on to comments of the week with the hashtag pod squad. squad. So if you do have any more hot takes and business like that that you want to leave in the comments, remember to leave a hashtag and we can read it out in a future episode. Yeah, and don't, don't tweet me. Oh, with well, those, with those do you get a lot of okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, do you get JRPG a lot of JRPG opinions <laughs> about JRPG right. opinions? Yeah, <laughs> there's just a hard rule. <laughs> yeah. Don't tweet me. Don't tweet me. I mean, it's a good rule. <laughs> I live by that rule. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave us a small little musical sting break, and then we'll be back with some music of our own when my voice returns. Ah. Oh, and my voice is back, and oh, so sultry. <laughs> Shall we do our little song, everyone? Oh, let yes. Yep. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time for comments of the week. Ah, oh, nice. Oh, yeah, we fit together. Yeah, like and that was the quickest we've done it as well. We didn't even have to discuss it. It was just yeah. right off the tongue. We go together oh. like comments of the week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. It's going so well. <laughs> uh, Rob, do you want to read these in your Gollum voice in celebration of Gollum Oh, time? yes. Yeah. Oh, please. Here you go. Right. So this is Everyone's from Jessica be B. <laughs> sick of this. <laughs> Jessica B. <laughs> <laughs> from the Rise for the Crown live stream. <laughs> oh, I absolutely loved watching the stream. Your full guy streams are always definitely one of my favourites. What an epic win your first crown was, Dave. I was at the edge of my seat. Rob, congrats, you played. Had some seriously smooth games there with great skill. Rosie, you are a fantastic commentator, especially your singing. Thanks for another great stream. Hashtag Pod Squad. Pod Squad. Oh, well, Pod Squad. <laughs> I'm not used oh to be <laughs> oh. I don't know if I could do all of the comments like that. Yeah, they all are. <laughs> just do quite one. Long. They're all quite long. long. Yeah. Yeah. He's just saying that like you can see on my, I, I don't want to show it to the camera actually. It's my secret private yeah, thing. Yeah. It's got a timer on it. It's got the, it's a whole, it's a whole page of writing this way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That was a lovely that comment. That's a nice comment. comment. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm yeah. sorry it was sullied by uh, Rob's perverse voice going it was <laughs> elevated <laughs> Jessica B will be loving that I wouldn't be surprised if yeah. Jessica B clips that audio and listens back to it and tweets for you many it. years send you a little tweet remembering the time when yeah, her yeah, comment was read out by Gollum in, in the Gollum voice yeah <laughs> an amazing B. moment it will be for Jessica B <sighs> Yeah. Ah, Jessica be good go go <laughs> right the next one I'm going to read it in a golem voice now <laughs> when, you, when will you be doing the golem voice from Texcat <laughs> is Jedi Survivor the ultimate it? Star Wars game is the video slash source are you going to do the Gollum voice? Just, just jokes get to guard. Yes, I know. <gasps> I'm trying to understand I'm just... what she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let me do the raw version. <laughs> you sound more like Gurgi from there's the Black Cauldron. There's a lot of lips involved <laughs> in your Gollum. There's a lot of lips. More lips than Gollum. Oh, <laughs> and crunchies. Yes. Um, 
Hashtag pod squad. Pod squad. Pod squad. Oh. I'm listening to this while on the train for a week away with work. My wife just texted me to say that my eldest son, brackets five, close brackets, was really upset after I left. And the thing he wanted to do to cheer him up was to watch Access Parenting Trophy Unlocked. <laughs> His favorite game is Spyro. Yes. So if you're wondering why you keep getting views on the winner plays on Platinum Race Stream, it's my son watching on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> That was such a lovely comment, just and I love about, the tour of Spyro. I just about got the gist of that. Yeah, <laughs> it's so hard to like you know respond in the golem voice because that was a lovely story. But with your golem, I can't help but be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. just say what you want to say, Jack. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Why would you write that like that? It was really hard to read in that voice. That was, a, like, that was a lovely comment, thank Jack. You. And thank you. Lovely to hear Sorry. that we uh, we have fans from from the younger generation. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I've got more. I've got more respect for you um, reading out that way because that was really hard. Rosie, it's your time to do a, a golem. A golem read. Golem. Golem. Yeah. Everyone's doing a golem. Number seven. Number seven. Rosie does a good golem. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's been a while though. I have to do like uh, my little. Hang on. Oh, my process. <laughs> hashtag pod squad. Hashtag pod squad. Pod squad. I've been playing on and off since this game launched on PS Plus and never in all this time got a crown. <laughs> you gave me the itch to jump back in again today and I finally won. That was on the rest for the crown stream from Seven. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, done. Good, well done. Well done. I need to watch the Lord of the Rings films to to know fully how he speaks. But go yeah, on, Dave. And well done on the time. <laughs> You've got to do a golem read. I, 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 I don't have to do a I can't do, I can't do a Gollum At voice. least do a little bit of Gollum. You don't have to read the whole. I know it's a long one. Can so you say just, hashtag pod squad as Gollum? Yeah, at least, at least that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. His voice again, someone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> and there's a purring! It's <laughs> quite good. <sighs> Hashtag pod squad. Pod squad. Pod squad. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to read the rest? Yeah, read, oh, do you read the rest of my yeah, normal voice? Do a no, normal choose voice. Do, a, do a Chewbacca voice? No, I'm doing my <laughs> voice. I'm a popular character. Race for the... This is from TJ the Skull Kid. Ooh. who says on the Race for the Crown video, Hey guys, well done on getting the crowns. Rob and Dave, you smashed it. I got in touch with you a while back. Where's this going? <laughs> 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 to tell you about finding out my wife was pregnant just after meeting you at the live podcast. <gasps> just wanted to update you all to tell you I can't believe you wanted me to do this as Chewbacca <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to update you all to tell you my daughter was born on the 4th of April Yay! Yay! may the April be with you she decided us to join uh, she decided to join us a month early and just for fun chose the moment I was on a plane home to London from Europe and it was time to come and meet us I had a mad dash from the airport and just about made it in time mother and baby are doing great also my daughter's name is Evelyn or Evelyn. 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 The re- the, from the rest of the comment, it's Evelyn. Okay. Uh, yes, I am a massive Resident Evil fan. I was going to say, it's Resident <laughs> Evil 7 Biohazard by chance. Uh, no, that's not why we chose the name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just conveniently forgot to remind my wife that it's also the name of a B-O-W. What's yeah. That? Uh, bio of war. Bi- uh, yeah. Uh, something of war. I can't remember. Biochemical. <sighs> nonsense of war well what a fantastic comment that's anyway, fantastic thank you very much congratulations so, to you all congratulations you. I feel so naked without my tablet <laughs> oh no thank you for sending that in um, I'm really going to be upset unless we remember what BOW stands for I know Rosie. I'm in my mind right now and I'm just yeah. trying to go through the there's documents there's lots of things you don't know about Resident Evil isn't there Rosie every time I feel a quiz every, coming on every time the, the it's all is, I just can't remember not. what that is right now <laughs> I just know so much Resident Evil. It all just it all just muddles up. It 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 all just gets muddled up. It's like me with Mimir earlier. I obviously know it's Mimir. Yeah, it wasn't there right then. Well, Mamiya, Mafar, wherever we are, it's <laughs> time to go to before we go. Thank you so much for your lovely comments this week, and congratulations to TJ the Skull Kid and TJ the Skull wife as well and Evelyn and, and TJ Evelyn. the school congratulations baby congratulations to Evelyn on yeah. now being alive, being alive yeah. yes. <laughs> and being a something of war a bee of yeah. war <laughs> right we're a gonna baby be, of war a baby of war, oh! baby of war. <laughs> there we go so we're gonna move on to the next section now which is before we go where we're gonna talk about some things outside of gaming maybe hmm. 
Okay, we are back to round off the podcast with some fun things that we've been up to. And we always have a little debrief before we get to this section and it turns out nobody's done anything fun. So, <laughs> <laughs> but we are all humans. Yeah, but we are here. We do exist. Rosie, you went to the tip. Yeah, I went to the... That's my exciting story, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. I went to the tip and I, I finished got... my book. Oh, sorry, oh. Rosie. I thought you were done with the tip. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've never... Honestly, the tip's got the happiest people in the world working there and I absolutely love going to the no, tip. But great. tell us about your book. No, I just finished it. That's it. Oh, what was nice. it called, at least? It was, it was a book of short stories by Stephen King called If It Bleeds. Oh, oh I've heard of this. What was your favourite one? Probably if it bleeds. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done, David. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. But it also had another story at the end called Rat, which I also enjoyed, which was Rat. Fun. But yeah, I... it, was a, it was it was I wasn't sure what to my first Stephen King. I wasn't sure what to expect. Obviously, not into scary stuff, but intrigued. And it was the right level for me. This one, it was just sort of like it was mysterious, a bit, yeah. a bit spooky. Um, oh, he's good. And he's I, so I really good. like the way he writes. His short stories are like sublime, like his novels are, are amazing, but the short stories are where he really shines because he's got this proper sense of, like you say, of mystery, of eeriness, of unexplained, like cosmic reasoning behind things that you don't need to dive into. Oh my God, let's do a Stephen King podcast. Also, just uh, short story books are great. I've yeah. read a couple now, not just Stephen King, and I'm just like... I mean, I love novels, but also sometimes it's just like you can be a little way into a short story and it's not quite for you and it's all right because it'll be over soon. And then there's another one and that's a banger and you're like, mm. oh, so many different, it's like loads of, it's loads of books in one. I am a short, short story short. advocate. Can I lend you Skeleton Crew? Will you read it? I don't know what that is. It's a Stephen yes. King. It's my favourite Stephen King short story collection. If, well, yeah, if you think I like it, yeah, definitely. I've made Chloe read it as well. Okay. Like you're just giving it people in the office and being like, read it. So I'm going to bring it in and everyone has to okay. read it. Um, my before we go is I'm I I had a week off everyone I don't know if you noticed Woo! oh we noticed yeah, yeah. we did yeah. yeah yeah did you all pine for me no oh <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> well I'm glad you didn't because I totally didn't either um well, and no I, you didn't because you were spending time with anteaters I did I went to go meet an anteater I went to the zoo we went to, I say we it was me and my boyfriend Sam we went to the zoo and for Christmas Which I zoo? Uh, it was Dr- I don't know how to say it just the zoo D- okay. just like Drew Silas or Drew Silas where in the country is it it's south uh, south what south like south like the really south we're in the south oh like south and the other way uh, <laughs> the other way of what southeast oh, no like but like lower than London the southeast yeah right never eat shrimp yeah the okay the um, oh, it's near something else it's near something else that we also went to doesn't uh, matter. Southeast maybe is maybe for me. Brighton. Okay. Yeah. 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 Bri- Brighton's down there for sure. That, Southeast. That kind of way. Oh, it was really stressful. I don't, I don't know my way around the country. You're always driving all over the country. How do you not know where things are? Yeah, Mr. Google tells me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Google. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Google. Oh, but yeah, I went to it was Drusilla's and I bought Sam a anteater experience for Christmas which I thought was a really thoughtful gift right I thought it was so thoughtful because we watch Animal Park all the time and we, we've we been to like other like animal sanctuaries and zoos and stuff and every time we go he just loves weird freaky animals like his whole thing is being like oh look at this guy and the anteater we went crazy for he was like this guy rules and when we were watching Animal Park he was like he literally paused it and made me come in to look at the anteaters with him because <laughs> I love them so much so I was like I got, he can meet a real anteater if I get him this and every time he's told anyone up until this point, he's gone, yeah, it was a real random thing for us to get <laughs> so I, I don't know if he's been like playing it down, like, because he's really excited or if he's actually like, what a weird thing. But we went to meet some anteaters anyway. And we got there and um, basically they eat Actimel. <laughs> so, oh, they eat and <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> You'd think it's in the name, but they're actually Actimel eaters. Oh, wow. Like, well, so am I then. Yeah. Well, Sam could have met me. I'm, I'm much cheaper. <laughs> the Dave experience. <laughs> Do you want to feed David with Actimel? <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the whole... <laughs> God, I don't all... bite Sam. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is right. You, you... <laughs> Sorry. The man gives you a little jar and you have to pour the Actimel into it. And then you go into a special room that the anteater comes into with you. It's like it's kind it's it's kind of like a small, it's got like a gate in front of it, and it comes from its little uh in ex- enclosure house, mm. comes into the little room, has a little snack, and then goes out, out outside so, into the the rest of the enclosure. It's yeah. got a really wide space. Yeah, it's like an airlock. Yeah, it genuinely is. You got the anteater airlock. And they have to do this because they 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 kept saying anteaters are cattery one animals. Category I don't know ones. what that means. Oh, they're category one. 
Yeah. yeah, yeah. It just, they just kept going, we can't let you in because they're a category one animal. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to start saying stuff like that. Yeah. You know, when I just can't be bothered yeah. to explain something like, no, because it's category one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Don't, yeah. Like, cause when, we, when, we, when we, it's just because when we, when we booked it, like uh, when you go to the desk and be like, okay, we're going to do this. We were like, oh, we're really excited to go and see them. And the woman was like, yeah, they're category one, you know. And, yeah. we, and we were like, oh yeah <laughs> and then we went over and the guy was like can't let you in the category one this is a horrible thought I don't think it could be this but like is it because they, are they very endangered could they no I like, was wondering this no no, no it's, it's a violence level thing is, oh, is what they are really violent yeah so, is what I thought it's because really? they want ants but we give them to melt yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's why they're category one <laughs> Imagine a lion on Actimel as well. God stay! <laughs> It'd be like category zero, like the yeah. ultimate. It's it's like they um it's not <laughs> they squeaks like a dolphin. Well oh, that's a category three. You yeah. find it, you find it a dolphin. Oh yeah, god. Um, I just really enjoyed the thought of a lion being noised. <laughs> <laughs> getting Actimel every day. <laughs> He loves it. <laughs> Look at his happy face. He's just, uh, he's it's just like, pouring, an, like an encounter with it. He's reaching out for you because he wants the Actimel. Yeah, like, yeah more Actimel. <laughs> oh, well, it's the, the thing, it's not that they're violent by nature and it's not because they're violent by Actimel either. <laughs> it's just they, basically, they're equipped with massive claws because mm. they're part of the sloth family. And if they jump up, they're really, they're really ravenous for Actimel. I'm sorry, but like, they're really like... <laughs> They've got a long, literary tongue, right? Yeah, so, and the, the literally, there was two. There was one, <laughs> one called Raya and there was one called Pablo. And Pablo literally was climbing the grate and like straining for Actimel. <laughs> and being you like, dare <laughs> bring me Actimel! <laughs> Like, but like you just look at it you know those videos of like cats and dogs that are like when they eat like food yeah. this, was, this was an anteater to a small tube of Axamel <laughs> in a jar um, and the reason that we they're quite category one is because like Pablo's so Axamel like sentry <laughs> that if he jumped up to you to get the sweet Axamel you, he could unzip your guts with his claws because oh, they're so oh, big and strong I really didn't See, know you were going to say uh, uh, guts there I was like <laughs> Pablo <laughs> <laughs> There's no act about it there, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, another hat <laughs> <laughs> um, But yeah, the <laughs> the zip was my coat. Yes. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So wait, hang on, so wait, because I'm just thinking about the like the the form of an anteater because how yeah. their nose <laughs> it's a giant anteater, it's massive. Okay, because like you know, for it to reach for it, is its claws long enough that it also matches the length of its nose? No. <laughs> like that's what I'm just like, what's it doing? Its claws. Now, this they're... is why they're in the behind bars. Yeah, it's because right. if they weren't the bars, they jump up. Excitedly. Oh, so it's more the, the the physicality of them jumping. Yeah, so they have backwards claws. Is the thing so they actually walk on their knuckles like gorillas. Oh. Gorillas. Oh, even. gorillas. <laughs> Gorilla pad. Gorillos. Gorillos. Oh, that's really gorillos. My favourite animal, the gorilla. <laughs> it's the masculine version of the word gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> gorilla. Oh god, they've got backwards claws, so they walk on their their little knuckles, knuckles, and then when they come up, they're like their claws are like here. So if they go for the actimal, they have to be really like Nyah! and like proper get you with it. So you're not allowed near them. Anyway, it was joyous because they were really excited about the actimal. Pablo was snuffling it. And like they proper go <laughs> into the thing, and it was, it's just really fun. Did you guys enjoy that? That was right in your ears. <laughs> Some anteater ASMR yeah. to enjoy there. <laughs> oh, don't. Oh. <laughs> uh, so yeah and you feed and they, and they sup it all up um, yeah Pablo is literally going crazy and Sam is re he's excitable he's like a he, he's he, oh bless him I love him he's proper like ah so he has his actimel well, and Pablo is like <laughs> and he's like no! <laughs> the pair have gone together I was like Whoa! like I was filming it like oh my god <laughs> my boys <laughs> my boys uh, and then we got to give them some ant dust afterwards as well Oh, yeah. so they did get some form of ants. I'm not yeah. even going to ask. Yeah, but like you know, you said that Sam could come and see you. Part of the deal was that you could, if you wanted to. And the guy said this to like 
too many times so that we had to do it um, you could pour the Actimel on your hands and let the, the anteater lick it off and that was a big thing why he, on earth would you not do that he was proper like put it on your hands I'd be like yeah <laughs> I was like did it have to go in the bottle no oh yeah. fantastic no, cause, cause it's where else can I hands. try and it? it's just proper like slithery it's like a little Wouldn't snowy you, you don't want to just you can't you've not fed an anteater if you just held a bottle of Actimel <laughs> and, it's just, and it's just like is it doing it then you've got to see the tongue and everything well, that is much better you see the tongue because it's a glass jar Okay, so it goes yeah, wild you do and, make a good point and also I thought it was just like literally off the like shelf <laughs> 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 no they're, they're, honestly they're so wild when they're eating it like, <laughs> yeah. uh, but like they I'm speaking a lot on anteaters here yeah. but yeah it's in a glass jar but also we were learning about anteaters and because they actually attack termite mounds like it's not so much ants but it's termites that they eat a lot of which are rock hard which is why they need the claws and why they're category one because they use their claws to knock over the, the termite mounds not the termites yes and then they put their big <laughs> sniffers in to, to get suck out all the juice because they've got very long very long noses yeah um they actually just like do loads of saliva like whilst they're doing it they're like because termites bite and sting uh, yeah. so it's like to, it, they basically have to go as fast as possible so that they're not getting attacked by termites such, such a stupid way of life this is quickly no, 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 what do they like Angemel? they must be like whoa oh oh oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the danger is like they had, a, they had it from it the bottle hurt. it's like the sharpness of the edge yeah, like, that's yeah. the real danger it just tastes yeah. good but oh. that so they're proper proper slobberers and yeah and we got to stroke them gently on the head Raya didn't like it she was like don't stroke me on the head so we didn't not what I mean but yeah uh, Pablo was so in like she engorging himself and acting mel that he was like I don't care <laughs> <laughs> like, literally his little legs were off the ground because oh. he was pulling himself up for acting mel like oh my god it was it was just they're so weird they are so weird and it was such a weird experience and I'm really glad I've got to regale you all with it on the podcast what I'm hearing is that acting mel need to make an anti to specific yeah. line of products like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> anti-mel, yeah like an anti mel jar like yeah. it's gonna have their branding on it and stuff so yeah I also I did loads of fun stuff for my week off, but that was that was the best bit actually so I'm going to leave it there um, but I also did other stuff and that's the end of that <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe there'll be more another time but uh-huh. right that is the end of the PlayStation Access podcast for this week come back in two weeks time for our next episode as we do them bi-weekly or fortnightly to be more specific because bi-weekly could mean twice a week which we definitely don't do no. so come to the YouTube channel in the meantime where we post loads of videos on fun stuff and all your PlayStation needs and we'll be back very soon so thank you for watching thank you for listening Listening. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. PlayStation.